QuickBooks Desktop 2023 Bank Reconciliation Month 1 Overview. Let's do it within two. It's QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in QuickBooks Desktop, Get Great Guitars Practice File. We started up in a prior presentation going through the setup process. We do every time maximize on the home page to the gray area view drop down. We got the hide icon bar open, windows list checked off, open windows open on the left. Reports drop down, company and financial, looking at that P&L, profit and loss. I'm going to change the range just for the month of January this time, 01, 01, 2, 3 to 12. 31, 2, 3. Customizing the report, fonts and numbers, changing them to 14. Okay, yes, and okay. Reports drop down again, company and financials. And we want to take a look at the balance sheet this time. And we'll customize it once again for the month of January 010123 to 013123. And then fonts and numbers, changing the font, bringing it up to 14. Okay, yes, and okay. So now we're going to think about starting up that first month bank reconciliation. We've entered data into our practice problem for two months, and we're going to reconcile them back to back. And the reason we want to do that is so we can put the reconciliations in one section and see the differences between reconciling on the first month and reconciling on the second month. The first month, you might have some problems with the bank reconciliation process, unique, unique to the first month. And in the second month, it should be pretty standard and be the same going forward into uh, future months from that point. So we've entered data into the system. If I go to the home page, we've done so using a full accounting system. In other words, we didn't create our data simply from the bank feeds or from the bank statements themselves. You could do that in some instances, that would be a more simplified accounting process, but we actually enter the data using invoices, sales receipts, receive payments and so forth, and then entering the deposits at the end of the revenue cycle and the payments at the end of the vendor cycle. Now, of course, the bank has their own transactions that they're entering on their side of things and we're gonna tie out what we've entered on our side to what has been entered on their side, that being the bank reconciliation. So if I go back to the balance sheet, then this balance right here represents where we stand in our data as of January 31st, 2023. If I look at the bank statement, which is we're gonna be represented by this mock bank statement here, we've got the summary data up top, the beginning balance, and notice there is a beginning balance and we're gonna to have to account for that and then we've got the additions, we've got uh, the, the subtractions, and then the ending balance. This ending balance then, you would think, would tie out to what we have on our uh, books. However, uh, if we're doing a full service accounting system, it's likely that that might not be the case because of outstanding checks, outstanding deposits, and items possibly that we didn't pick up, or possibly errors, usually errors on our side, but there could also be errors on the bank side as well. So we wanna come up with a reconciliation, tying out what we have to what the, the bank has, not simply to double check our cash, but also to double check all the other transactions. If I can do that, I'm double checking all the detail here, which will give us a double check on the other side of the transactions within the cycle. So let's first start the reconciliation process so we can see what it looks like if we go to the banking dropdown. We can go into the reconcile item here, banking and reconcile. I'm going to be looking at the checking account. If you have multiple checking accounts, you can look at multiple accounts. You may also reconcile the credit card accounts. 
and then we're going to go down and say this is as of let's say 013123 now note here we have a problem the beginning balance is zero that doesn't tie out the idea of the bank reconciliation is going to be that we have a beginning balance of 30,000 that must tie out for the thing to work and then we're going to say that all the additions are going to we're going to tick them off and all the subtractions we're going to tick them off which means we must end at the proper ending balance and anything that we didn't tick off in theory will be outstanding outstanding checks outstanding deposits if i'm off on that beginning balance that's the unique thing to the first bank reconciliation that may be off depending on the process possibly because we started doing some banking before we started working in quickbooks or we possibly had another accounting system and when we entered the data into our accounting system we did so with a beginning balance transaction which you would think might pull in uh, to the beginning balance here but even if it did it would still be off a little bit so so i'm going to go back to that problem in a second the ending balance is going to be 61 so we've got 61281.45 as the ending balance 61241856161241641 okay i think i got it that time it's easier if you have a side-by-side -side screen, of course, or if you have a, a paper document of the bank statement. And then you've got these items for the service charge. Now we do have service charges and we have interest. These are items that oftentimes we don't know about until we do the bank reconciliation and we can apply them out here. But I like to actually go through the reconciliation and add them as needed when I do the reconciliation because I think that is easier to tick and tie off. So I'm not gonna use those and that is it there. Now notice if you had an error in the last reconciliation, then you're gonna have to go back and undo the last reconciliation so you can get the next one right. So in other words, if your beginning balance was wrong and it was not the first bank reconciliation, but you have messed up on the prior bank reconciliation, you might be able to undo the prior bank reconciliation, right? And then redo the process. So sometimes that is necessary. So I'm gonna say continue. And so here we have our normal bank reconciliation process. The idea being that we're gonna have the same beginning balance. That's our problem right now. And then we're gonna be ticking off all the activity that has happened. If it's on the bank statement over here, then uh, we should be able to find it on the books. If it's on the bank statement and not on the books, then typically we're gonna have to add it to the books unless the bank entered something in error, which isn't typically the case. It's usually the case, like with those items on the fees, as well as 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 a uh, uh, interest that the bank is right, and we have to add them to our books in order to reconcile. If they're on our books but not on on the bank statement, then they're going to be items that will not be checked off, and we would expect items that that are towards the end of the month, possibly not to be checked off, because uh, they're outstanding especially if we wrote checks, we might see some checks and we will see in the practice problem that are outstanding. Those will be the reconciling items. Those will be the difference between the bank's balance and the book balance. During this process of reconciling, we should be able to tie out uh, the, the beginning balance if once we put the beginning balance in place and uh, the increases and decreases and come out to the exact same checked off amounts and therefore reconcile to basically this number. Now that number will not then be what is on our books at the end of the day. At the end of the day, we're not gonna end up with this number on our books, although we might change our books slightly if there's something on the bank statement that's not on our books, but we'll be able to check off everything to get to a reconciled balance up to this amount and the unchecked off things, outstanding deposits and checks will be the reconciling items, the difference between what's on the books and what's on the bank statement. Okay, so let's go back on over and we're gonna say that beginning balance problem. You can see here that even if it put the beginning balance in place, it would be for that 25,000. And you'll recall if I go into my, uh, let's go into the lists chart of accounts. And when we set up the checking account, if I right click and edit the checking account, right click and edit the account, then we, we entered an opening balance when we started up the checking account remind me later of the 25,000. 
So, so that so you would think possibly that within the reconciliation it would have twenty five thousand. But even if it did, that's still not correct. It's not the thirty thousand. We need it to be thirty thousand. So the beginning balance would still be wrong. So where it is now, what we're going to do is we could say, well, I can always even if it's not in the beginning balance when it's the first bank reconciliation. I can go into the reconciliation and just check it off right there and I could still be okay and I can note to myself, okay, I'll still be able to reconcile because I could still check it off. I can't check it off as the beginning balance, but I'll add it as part of the additions and I'll note that as my beginning reconciliation and I should be fine. So I can take care of that problem, but now I still have the problem that it's 25,000 and not 30,000. How did that happen? That happened because when I took my prior bank accounting system, I took the, the balance that was in my prior accounting system on the trial balance and just entered that into um, QuickBooks. I, I couldn't enter the 30,000 because I wouldn't be in balance, meaning this was my trial balance that I entered into the system as my beginning balances. It had 25,000 on it. That's why we entered it into the QuickBooks system. So my beginning balance was off. Well, why is the beginning balance off? The beginning balance is off for the same reason that our ending balance is, is always going to be off. There could be outstanding deposits. There could be outstanding checks that, that we have to deal with. So that's going to be kind of an issue with the first bank reconciliation if you had you know prior outstanding checks and deposits from the prior accounting system or something like that. You're going to have to basically pull those in and account for them within the current system when you start to reconcile. So that's going to be the beginning or first bank reconciliation problem that often will be encountered. Now, if I go back on over to the to the first item here, I think we'll note, we'll be able to see once we tick and tie all this stuff out that there's a difference, 30,000 versus what's in our books. And we should see some checks, if it was outstanding checks that didn't clear last month, that will clear this month. So you can see this this right here you would expect that that might be the difference right there from checks that cleared. So the, the, the problem will actually work itself out. And there's a couple of ways that you could still be able to reconcile with it in there. But we'll talk more about that in the future. In, in essence, I'm going to suggest that what we would want to do to fix that is enter these checks into the system because they cleared in the current period, even though they weren't entered in the current period, they were entered in the prior period, which is typically done with a prior bank reconciliation but I would like to enter the prior checks into the current system so that I can account for when they cleared. And so we'll talk more about that uh, when, we, when, we, when we get to the end of the first month bank reconciliation, but that's gonna be one of the major kind of things that we wanna consider. So once we have that, if I have this beginning balance tied out, then if I can get this beginning balance tied out and then account for that other 5,000, then I could say, okay, that beginning balance is correct and then I can check off all of the deposits. Hopefully these deposits will be clearing the, the bank statement in the right uh, grouping. So, and also note, I can hide, if I hide up here, I could see some trans, I could see just the transactions that go up through uh, January. I shouldn't need any transactions in February because if I enter the transaction in February, there's no possible way that it could have cleared the bank in January. Uh, so so that so we can basically usually cut that off and just see the detail up in the month that we're basically working in. It, it is possible, however, to have something on the bank statement that that uh, that didn't clear. So in other words, it's possible for us to have entered something in January that didn't clear the bank until February. So in any case, if I looked, so notice a grouping of this of deposit over here. There's the deposit right here. So we're just going to tick and tie everything off. And if I look at the check side of things, then we're going to have the checks here or the decreases 16. And we can tick and tie those off to here. As we start to check these off, you'll see the balances down below changing. So let's just kind of recap this whole screen. We've got, we've got the periods. We've got the checks and payments on the left. These are the decreases. We've got the deposits on the right. Uh, we've got the the highlight marked items. We could mark all of them. So this works quite well if you are using the bank feeds to basically create your books. Then you still want to do the bank reconciliation, and you can essence in essence just mark everything off, and it should tie out. If it doesn't, you've got to go through and check it all off. 
but it might tie out because you created your books from the bank statement. However, if that's not the case, then that's usually not going to work. I can unmark them all in this way as well. Down below, I have the beginning balance. Once again, that should be, you would think, 30000 if it was a normal non-first month transaction. But here, I'm going to check off the 25000 as the beginning balance, which will be included in the increases or deposits. And I'll have to figure out what happens with that other 5000 which was the outstanding items for the beginning of the month we'll talk about later. And then we've got the, the checks and payments. So these are going to be, if I tick and tie these out, we'll see the activity here. At the end of the day, if this was perfectly tying out, we would have then the beginning balance of 30000 the additions 143 after I check them all off, and then the 111892 should be basically mirrored down here. And if that's the case, this difference over here will be zero. And it has to work. So you want to make sure that when you're going through this process, you're going to say, well, it has to work. If my beginning balance ties out and I checked everything off, then the ending balance has, has to reconcile. If it doesn't, then I got to fix something, right? And then I'll go in and fix it. Then we've got the, the ending balance here, and this is the cleared balance. Now, these two are going to be the same, which will reconcile to zero. Note that the cleared balance is does not represent what's on the balance sheet the cleared balance does not represent this balance the cleared balance will be then the ending balance of the 61 to 41 to reconcile it will still be different than what's on our balance sheet because the items that we did not check off in here we're going to assume are outstanding outstanding checks outstanding deposits checks deposits that we made that have not yet cleared the bank those are going to be the reconciling items. QuickBooks will then make the reconciliation report, which will show those items as the difference between what's on our books and what's on the bank's books. If we get that amount exact, meaning this to be exactly zero, then we have a very good uh, internal control. If this is anything other than zero, even if it's like a dollar or two dollars, you're like, ah, you know, I'm not worried about that in terms of my bank balance. I don't care if I'm missing $5 or whatever, $1,000, whatever. But it's not about the bank balance. If you're missing $1,000 or $500 or $2 even, that could be because you're not accounting for multiple checks and multiple deposits. So it's not about the ending bank balance. It's the fact that if you haven't entered those multiple checks and deposits, not only is your cash balance not reflecting that detail, but also if I go to the homepage, the other side of the transactions, the vendor cycle, the customer cycle, the employee cycle is not reflecting that because the double entry accounting system has two accounts affected. So, so if you have anything other than zero on the bank reconciliation, your level of, of internal control, the use, the need, the, the requirement of the reconciliation goes way down. And you, you, you should be able to get it to zero because it has to work, right? It has, I mean, you, at the beginning, if the beginning balance is right, and you take everything off, the exact numbers here to what's on your books, it has to work. And if there's a difference, then you figure out what it is and you fix it. Okay, so that's the general outline, the general overview. We'll go into it step by step in future presentations.